So welcome, there was a little introduction. So my friends like me, well I like to think that they like me. Uh, I'm Marcus and uh, I'm actually popping in because normally Ole was doing the presentation and uh, he was a little bit sick and he's better. So indulge us if uh, this was last minute uh, replacement, but uh, we are trying to do this correctly and well. So why do my friends like me? Um, I was thinking of how to introduce open translators and uh, presentation. We do all know how you have to do a presentation, tell a story from the beginning to the end, blah, blah, blah. And so I was thinking, what's the angle? I need an angle. And I couldn't find an angle. And then I start thinking about myself and I said, well, actually my friends like me when we travel because I happen to speak five languages more or less good. Uh, so I'm not native in English, as you can hear. But uh, So when I travel with my friends, they like me, because when we go to Spain, for example, they rely on me to go there. We go with my group of friends, excellent people. They're very good at what they do. Nice wives, homes, cars, businesses. But then they're abroad. We go to Spain, and they want a coffee. Marcus, un café, por favor. So they use me. I'm a tool. No, did I say that in English? Well, I'm their tool. They use me as a tool. That's why my friends like me. And that's the whole idea of open translators. So um, we are going to talk today about open translators. So I was thinking about myself as a tool and open translator is a tool, is a hub where we connect developers with translators. That's the whole idea. It is community driven. That means that uh, we, don't, uh, we don't put many rules. We have few rules on how, how we work. We just let the people empower themselves and empower the groups, the translators and the developers. So we work through TransFX. I don't know if uh, you guys have heard of it. That's the tool that we use. So open translators just let the developers and translators work with TransFX and uh, he is going to explain in Bulgarian or English how TransFX works. He's going to show us afterwards how TransFX works. So we started this because uh, actually Joomla is very good at languages, right? We have uh, many, many good teams and people here, Mareke, for example, is one of the old members of uh, the Joomla translation teams, right? So uh, we have very good experience with Joomla and, and languages. We're good at languages. We're a good CMS at languages. Then we, we translate Joomla. What about extensions? 8,000 or more extensions? What is there for extensions? Well, there was not many much organized. Every developer had his own translators. Mm. So we thought, well, why not use all those translators together? And the one who translates, for example, I don't know, K2 or Sobi, we exchange translators. So we have a big hub of translators for the developers. That's the whole idea behind it. So as I said the other day to, to, to Hills, Hills Cheney, who there, right? You, know, you might know her <laughs> from Twitter and else. Uh, nature hates void. Nature abhors when there is a void. And there if there is a need, it will be filled. So there was a need and we started to see that it, it, it was filled through TransFX. People are translating. Developers are putting their things in with some difficulty sometimes. We're going to explain how to overcome those difficulties. Yeah. 
but uh, it works well and the community is responsive about it so who's using it mm. uh, we'll go through the figures afterwards we have um, uh, I think uh, around um, my numbers we have like around 120 or more projects in there, extensions that are already registered through open translators in Transifex. So that's quite a lot of extensions that are already there, plus a lot of translators also. Hmm. There are some big extensions and there are some little ones. So we have like Red Component, one of the big ones that has been using this. And then very little uh, extensions that have no, that can't reach actually a big pool of translators because they're little, they're like one or two developers and that they don't have the power that a uh, red component has for example, they have many translators, professional translators or people that help so there's a lot of people using it. I'm not going to do the whole list because uh, there are many and uh, the idea of open translators, I hope you got it, is that we share translators that's the whole idea how does it work? Mm. What you do is the, tran the translators, they offer, they offer their services. So what do they offer? Their knowledge, their language. This is in Spanish, of course it's on, on purpose. Mm. They go to Transifex and the developers put it in Transifex. They connect together and they introduce, they translate it and then they tell it to the world. Right, but he's going to go into the tech details a little bit more. So this is uh, Transifex. This is the actual, the real tool that is being used. Right. So it has quality control tools. It has collaboration, localization, workflow management, a lot of things. And we're going to see afterwards how you can use it, how you can maximize it for developers and translators. Right. Most of you are developers. But we mustn't forget how the translators are going to use the tool. Some of them are quite tech savvy, some of them are not at all. Okay, let's go into a little bit more details. One of the nice things of Transifex is that it offers translation memory. What is that? Translation memory is actually the memory of all strings translated within the hub open translators. So we have 123 projects here that have been translated more than half a million strings that have been translated since September so that's not bad so a string can be like two words or like this right mm. the idea of the translation memory is that in Transifex you have a translation memory about everything like uh, for example if you say extension the memory will memorize that in French it is written extension, just the same. But it will memorize because 10 or 15 people will, will have translated it the same way, right? That is through whole Transifex. Transifex has a lot, of, uh, a lot of other projects in it, but Open Translators is a little bit different because we have our own hub. So we're not w one project, it is a lot of projects. But all those projects within Joomla share the same memory. That means that uh, extension, for example, I'm going to say the same, same, same thing, will be memorized as the people, the, the translators from open translators have translated this this way. So that's very interesting. So we avoid mistakes. We learn from experience. That is very good. So the translation memory specif specific for, for open translators, right? Then we have string suggestions. When you don't know how to translate a thing, you can suggest a translation. You can say, I suggest that this translation that has already been done be done another way, like say this or that. Uh, he's going to explain it in a more technical way, how he can suggest it. Uh, going back a little bit to the... When you translate this, we're going to see afterwards that there are the little buttons like suggest a translation, suggest, suggest something better, right? We have a nice team. Yeah, I was told not to put that uh, picture. 
I did put it in. We have a beautiful team. And uh, not only the core team, the people behind Open Translator that, that uh, tweet, that uh, accept uh, people that are in, but the teams, the translator teams, right? So how does it work? We have like uh, uh, more than 60 languages, different languages. And there is one person responsible for that language that leads the team, right? Then you, have, you can have 10 or 15 people in and you have a lot of different teams by language. And it is auto-managed. They manage themselves. We don't, we don't tell them how to manage it. Right? Correct me if I'm wrong, Peter. Okay. <laughs> Okay, but we have also reviewers, right? So the ladies also have uh, something to look at. <laughs> what are the reviewers? It is something that has not yet been completely implemented, but the possibility is there. That if a developer, it is very important that the developers keep their, their stuff in their hands. They have the control of their software, right? So they can assign reviewers to translation teams in coordination with them and say, you are the one saying that this is okay, ready, right? That, those are the reviewers. You can have uh, reviewers by, by languages, by language teams. So that is between the developer and the language teams. Each, each one has to, each developer can do it in its own source, I would say, I don't know. Source, yeah, no? Huh? Yeah, exactly. I mean, like the way he likes it to do. Okay, now your turn. He's going to show us a little bit how it actually works. So I've done the big picture, I hope. And uh, we're going to switch the mic. I broke it. Yeah, how many of you are developers laptop. actually? Everybody in the room except for yeah. Okay. So, do you have your laptops with? No. Okay. Okay. In this case, then you have to watch. Uh, how are you currently handling your translations? No. Not. Not. Okay. Right. <laughs> this was the. This was exactly what I was doing uh, in the past. Um, I had people coming to my forum and saying, "Okay, I want to translate it in this language," and they were translating it and they were publishing the translation on the forum or they were sending it to me via email so I had to download this translation on my computer unzip it move it to the project and publish it in uh, in my repository which was of course a very boring process and I really hated it and I had all the time to communicate with somebody to make a translation in a language then I keep I lose track of uh, who sent me what what is actual and what's not. And in this process, I was all the time reading on Twitter about open translators. And I was wondering, what is this? So one day I decided, come on, let us try it. Let me try it. I went to open translators. I went through the tutorials there. I eventually registered on Transifex and tried to publish my project there. And uh, it didn't work that well. I was really disappointed, and Peter know this, knows this. I was bashing all the day about uh, Transifex and how it unuser friendly it is, and how I'm wasting my time, and I really hated it. And I wasted two days just to put my first project on it. And uh, for the most part, the the, the fault is on me because I went with the, with the wrong mindset about Transifex. I didn't know what it is. And uh, the interface was not helping me enough to understand how to work with it. But once I figured that out, I can create a new project in just 10 minutes and people can start to translate. I can pull the, the translations on my computer and then publish it in the directory. In fact, uh, I can do this every time before a release. I just put a comment in the console and I have the translations. So uh, let us see how this works. We will go to the Transifex. If the internet connection allows it. 
So obviously you have to register here. You can also register on open translators and uh, publish a note in the forum that you have an extension for for uh, for translation. And you can say to your to the people that are interested to translate it that you can give them a free version of the extension or whatever perks you want to give them. So. Once you register on Transifex, um, you can create your projects. Obviously, we have some projects here. Uh, I'll try to create a new one so that you can see how it works. Um, let us call it uh, Open Translators Transifex Demo. We'll put a small description here. And we will send it like open source, obviously. Um, we'll choose our source language. This is the language that will be used for, uh, that will be shown to translators when they try to translate. So if you, you can put French if you want. So people that try to translate, they will see the French, uh, the French source code and would translate it in English or in another language. I normally choose English. Um, so ENGB. Which and is the official thing that Joomla uses, right? Yeah, there is a small difference that we'll go into. In Transifex, we have the underscore, where in Joomla you use the minus for the translation, and you need to map those things together. And Peter has uh, already done this, and I can, I've uploaded uh, a copy of my configuration file so you can use it later if you want. We have some advanced fields here. You can put the home page, translator instructions, uh, so what they need to do, etc. You can put a bug tracker. And what I advise you to do is also to select uh, Bing Translator, for example, and put the API key so that people can click a button and it will be translated. So things like yes, no, they don't need to type this every time. They can just uh, use the automatic translation and just um, see if it's correct or not. So once we are ready with this, uh, we can save it and we'll have a new project. So in the past, there, was, there were things like uh, GitHub integration and uh, other platforms. And I, when I started with Transifex, I was thinking that when I entered de the details to my project, that they would automatically download all the translations. But this was not the way it worked. So once, you have, once we have our demo here, um, we can click on Create Language. And you can create the language, save it, then upload the file for this language, which is not working when you already have 100 languages. Uh, you cannot go all the day and input new languages. They're just plain stupid. So this is where the Transifect client comes in the game. Uh, it's a small utility. You can install it on Linux, uh, Windows, and Mac. Uh, let us go to the document, documentation. Mm, you can download it right from here. Mm, the Transifect client. You have uh, an explanation how to install it on Linux. And if you're on a Windows machine, you can <laughs> scroll down and you get to download the Windows version. So I'm using the Windows version, obviously. Um, it's pretty use, easy to use. I've created a demo project where I just have the TXXA in it, and I just need to start the console. Navigate to this directory. So, the first command when you set up your project for the first, for the very, very, very first time, is to type tx dot uh, exe and then init. So this will ask you. This will create the tx folder in the project uh, folder, 
and it will ask you for the Transifex instance. I will explain later what this is. For now, I just click enter. It will create a configuration file and it will ask me to enter my username. I'll enter something here and something as a password. So what, did, what this thing did, it created a .tx folder in your project. And in this folder, we have a config file. This config file is basically the place where uh, you can define what uh, languages your, um, uh, your component has. You can define that you have a .sys.ini file, that you have modules, that you have plugins, and you can define everything here, and you can push those things to, to, uh, to the server. So with, uh, with this done, I also want to show you that uh, the client also created um, a config file for the username and password. Uh, it's located in your user profile. Um, so here and down Transifex RC. Um, you can see obviously I have a, a project that's called Compujum. This, this, this are going to be the credentials to lock with my Compujum username. Uh, for example, we are using Transifex also for admin price. And in this file, I can define also a project for admin, the username and login for, for admin price. And this way I can work on multiple projects from the same computer. So here, you, when you have this file, uh, when, you, when you do this, then you normally have to have a password here. So in, this, in those fields. And um, uh, yeah, let me show you how a normal configuration file looks like. So this is the configuration file for hotspots. It's a small extension. Um, as I told you, uh, we need to do some mapping, string mapping, uh, because Transifex uses the underscore in the language definition and Joomla uses obviously the minus. So this is where this lang map comes into play. And uh, as far as I know, the thing that Peter does is pretty complete. So nearly all language is already there. And uh, you can just grab this code here, langmap, and just paste it in your config file in all, all, the, all your uh, Joomla projects. This uh, line here is very important. It's used to create, uh, on Transifex, you not only uh, manage any files. You can manage all kinds of translation for WordPress or for Windows projects or for whatever. And uh, the type in it tells what uh, Transifex to create um, a Joomla project, basically, and uh, to handle it as any files. So this part here is very easy. This is the core, actually. So on trans if, you're, if you're on Transifex, you see that we have this part here, Open Translators Transifex Demo. This is our slug. This is our project. And uh, it should come actually in this part. So trans when you push the translations, Transifex will see, okay, this is this project. The user is authenticated, and it will then look for the, the resource that we create, the language resource. In this case, admin com hotspots. I will move to the hotspots project just to uh, show you that we have real languages there. Hmm. So hotspots. Our languages are over here, and we have resources. I have 18 resources. I have my uh, backend language as translated. I have my frontend language. I have my modules and uh, plugins, and everything is in here. And this is actually defined in this file. So uh, this is the project name, Compujum Hotspots. You can find it in the URL, Compujum Hotspots. And this is the name of the resource, admin com hotspots. This is the first one. So when you define your config file like this, uh, you need to say a file filter. This is basically pointing to the place where your languages, language translations are residing. In my case, I follow the Joomla, Joomla structure. So I have administrator language. And lang is replaced with the 
translation uh, variable, so it, it's going to be D, D, or something else for France, etc. Source file is obviously my source file for the translations, and I'm also setting the source language to ENGB. And we have a nice parameter saying that we want only to get translations that are at least 80% translated. You can put this to 100, so you, when you download translations, you, you won't get translations that have just one string in them. Um, so once you define this file, once you define all your resources here, you just uh, go to the client. Uh, what's this? Extensions. Come. What's this? So, right from here, I can just type text exe pool, and this is going to pull all the translations that are existing for my project. If new translations are there, then they are, will be also downloaded and uh, inserted in the project. And um, so, as I said, for the first time, I have like 20 translations that I want. I don't want to create uh, new resources and add the languages manually. So in this case, then I'll have to just type, uh, once this finish, you can type takes exe push. It will push the files to the server. If a resource is not existing, it will create it. And if you have translations, it will also push the translations over there. So you can go for coffee and when you come back, everything is there. Um, it won't work at the moment because I don't have my password. Enter it in the file, but when you type the thing and just hit enter and it will, it will start to create the things. Um, you have also, the thing that I'm interested in is uh, to automate the process as much as possible. I haven't done yet, uh, this yet. Uh, you have the possibility to use webhooks. So TransFX can send um, a notification to a specific URL that you define and tell uh, this is what happened. Somebody uplo um, up uploaded a new translation, somebody updated something, somebody deleted something. And so on the base of this, you can decide what you want to do. For example, you can have uh, your client to pull all the translations and push them to GitHub. You can do uh, things with that. I don't have uh, very much experience with this, but I know that people are already using this thing. Um, for quick overview, when you go here, you can see how many of the languages are translated and how many are not. Uh, you can see the percentages uh, that you have, and uh, if you click on the language, let's select uh, Swedish. Uh, when you click on it, you have download for use. You can download the file, download only review translations, and you can view the strings online and, tr and translate them directly from there. So your translators don't have to download the files and upload them manually. They can do this everything from the, uh, from the, the side. Um, can, you, can you make sure? Uh, like, uh, uh, let me go to another project. It's quite easy for a translator without any technical knowledge, which we so I you click on the for those, but there are a lot of translators that don't know about that don't have a lot of technical knowledge. So we have translators for your extensions that know about Joomla, that know your extension. That's of course perfect case scenario. Then you have a lot of translators that don't have technical skills. They go there and they do this. They click on the thing, like uh, for example, view strings online or, or translate now. It's Where is the ah exactly translate now? <laughs> uh, so, so then here you have the field. They, have it. they see what the, the original string is, and they can just type the translation and scroll down. I think save all or delete translation and save and exit, and you can move to the next page and translate it. You also have options like uh, what's this uh, so su suggestions. So you can click here and uh, you can suggest something. Uh, you can also see details. Uh, you can see who translated what. And uh, if uh, a new translation is not correct, you can delete it and uh, move back to the, to the old translation. If you have uh, enabled Bing Translate or Google Translate, there's an extra button. Or uh, it's yeah, I think I... On the left-hand side. So it 
do your uh, so there, there has been a, a change on Google API before it was open, and a couple of months ago they it's not been paid, so that nice. <laughs> we felt it as developers. Sorry. Well, you can explain that maybe. Oh yeah, uh, before that the Google API was free, so everybody, everybody was using it, but uh, Google decided to go uh, the, and ask for money. Um, so Bing is still free, but uh, I mean, we are all making money from this, so we can allow to, to buy a Google Translate key or whatever, it's not that big of a problem. Um, it helps translate it, me, myself, or Sometimes I translate things, and it helps because uh, for little things that you don't want, like yes, no, as you said, it really goes much, much. It quicker. speeds up the process. You don't, you don't rely on Google Translate, of course, but it helps. It speeds up the process. Um, a very important part uh, that I want to mention is um, when you go to your language file. Um, make sure that when you upload your source file that the first string that comes in your language file is actually a uh, semicolon. So the thing is, uh, Transifex is guessing which version of Joomla you are supporting. So if you don't have the, the semicolon in there, it thinks that it's Joomla 1.5. And this screws things on Joomla 1.7 and 2.5 because... Uh, yeah, so the first thing that should come in every language file at the moment, perhaps in the future they will just uh, skip 1.5 and uh, it will be uh, some, it will work, but you should have this language, uh, you just have to have the, the semicolon in there. If you don't have it, the files will be corrupt, you download it, you publish your extension and you realize that you have uh, wrong translation and, no, and nothing is working actually. So. Uh, um. Now you can see in the language file that there's, there's actually on the left hand side the original text and every time with a prefix which is, uh, well, point of view or component, uh, you mentioned earlier that actually there's, there's like a hundred thousands of, of strings contained in uh, Transifex, Transifex, Transifex. Transifex. Um, but actually like that, that benefit of all these hundred thousands of strings is not here at all because, uh, well, the new Joomla 2.5 um, standard is actually subscribing, like, you have to use your component name as a prefix. No, 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 that's, uh, this is the, um, you have a key and a value. Yeah. So the values are stored in, uh, oh, okay. in the, in oh, the yeah, thing. Yeah, so it, when you're on the, with the um, with what I when you're the here, The translator is actually seeing the original uh, translation there. He doesn't see the, the strings, uh, the keys for, for, the, for the thing. And that's why the, this thing also works. Um, yes, I, I think he wanted to ask a question. Sorry? Sprint F? <laughs> Sprint F, okay. Uh, so can you add maybe, is it possible to leave a note or a comment on the translator so that they know in which context uh, this might go? So well, they will see, normally in your English file you have, uh, you have this uh, person sign and then S, for example. So they will still see this thing here in, in, um, in, the, um, in the source string. Uh, I've also spoken with uh, some guys from Transifex and uh, we have this idea where you can put here at the top, you could put as a developer, you could put a note with explaining some things to, to the user, like don't use, uh, uh, what's this, quotes. You ha the translator doesn't have to use quotes here when he translates the string. I'm translating this. So if he does this, then uh, your language file will end with uh, 
QQ underscore and stuff like this. So it would be really nice if in the future we could just uh, enter some text here and format it with HTML and make it red so that they can read it every time and know, okay, I don't have to put this, I don't have to, I have to watch for this thing. Um, but at the moment, uh, as we saw in the, cr the, the, the um, creation of the project, there you have a <coughs> URL for your translators where you're explaining them how to translate and stuff like this. So you should use this and uh, when they go there, they go to your page and they can read what, uh, what you wrote. So there's no automated replacement for those characters or things like uh, in German we have uh, uh, formal language and non-formal yeah, uh, uh, no, there is, as far as I'm aware no, but as, as to reply to your question, the thing is that, the, the, and I'm coming again to the translation memory, the best practices will be suggested in the translation memory about the best practices <laughs> <laughs> will be suggested in the translation memory. So if you use, say, uh, as your example, do and be. Uh, and <coughs> so uh, if you use do all over the place, mm -hmm. and if everybody, like in, in, in the other strings around open translators, on all the extensions use z, mm -hmm. it will suggest that you adapt it to z, because all over the place everybody's been using the same thing. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the community part of it, that's uh, held together, but it does it automatically. For you, you don't have to say it, it learns. Okay. So it learns from the good because we won't let pass I think back for the things or whatever, the, it will auto regulate somehow. Mm -hmm. okay. Sorry? What is the standard base part then? I mean, what's the, the standard size? What's the best translation for the board or what do you? Well, actually, who decides? There is nobody in particular who decides. We don't have yeah, a king that says this is good, this is bad. What we have yeah. is a market having the extension translated and saying this is good, this is bad. So actually, what do you have? You have translation exten uh, trans extension translated. Like, and then, if it's good, the people will use it. If it's bad, the people will say it. For the most part, this will work with small strings. And go and, go and translate it again say, I don't like this and that, then in Google and Joomla you can always use extension if you don't like the translation, you can change it. You don't have to know that it is in the, in the ini file over there. There are extensions where you can correct the translation. So, but that is out of the scope actually of open translation. We don't, as I said, we, we, there, 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 is a, there is a very much important thing about open translation, which is empower people and give trust. This is really a community project. And it, it has been there because there was nothing. Four extensions. Right? There was nothing organized in this way. There were other things, but there was nothing organized in this way. So it is there, and when we say there are more than half a million strings translated, that speaks for itself, I think. So we're not trying really to convince all that. We're just showing how it works. Now, where I would like to convince people is that the big developers share their translators because there are big extensions that are that are that sit on transit text and that are not using open translator, which is good. But if they would share the translators between them, it would be even better. That's what we think. That, that, that's what I that's the call I'd like to make. Otherwise, if you like your system, use it. Good. If you if you like this system, also use it. Uh. The thing that I forgot to show is how you assign open translators to your project. So when you have your project, you just click on manage and uh, then you have uh, access control. And you can say, it's not only open translators that you can choose from, you, can, you have a pool of uh, other um, communities that translate extensions, so you can create your own if you want. Uh, but from here, from this list, you just uh, outsource the access to open translators. And uh, the good thing is that open translators has a lot of uh, good translators. So if they're interested, then they can see your project and they can come to you and translate it for you. So this is the, the, the good part about it. Um, yeah. I still have a question. Um, you, you mentioned or you mentioned a 
earlier about um, that perhaps in the future TransFX will include a feature to have comments on the entire project. Yeah. Um, but m maybe I missed it. But is there a possibility to have a comment um, on a specific string? Yeah. Actually, if you can go back, you can you can comment. On yeah. It. Uh, yeah. So that's actually usable, for instance, if you have English and uh, you have the English word free. Not, not all of us know that it's actually having two meanings. Free, where free is in speech. Um, um, and in the suggestion box there. Yeah. Or e then you can, the suggestion can be about the translation yeah, okay, so or yeah. something else. You see, so it, it, it exists now. There is something important mm -hmm. that TransFX is an open source project, right? But they've grown. They come from the Google Summer of Code five years ago, a little bit more. So uh, the guy that started all this, uh, his name is Dimitris Glezos. He has helped us a lot. And he likes the project. He likes the project a lot, so he helps us. And actually, we sit on, on, on TransFX, and, and normally you would pay for this service. Because it's, uh, we, we actually do a lot. Like, uh, and it's getting, every day it's getting more and more and more. So he, he helps us and we help him back. A lot of uh, Daniel, Peter, a lot of other developers have given, uh, I would say, a debug system. And it, it goes on and on like that. And uh, it has been a quite good relationship, I think. So it's a, it's a win-win situation for everybody. So uh, we, um, this, we show, we're showing trans effects, but this presentation is really about open translators so and how we take the translators and the developers and we connect the dots. That's the all I need. connect the dots. I've uploaded my uh, sample config uh, for trans effects uh, on uh, compojum.com slash trans effects and then slash config txt if anyone wants to use it. Um, so basically what I, what I do is uh, you don't need to every time initialize a new project. You don't have to go through the init command every time. So once you do this, you have um, um, what I normally do when I, si uh, do when I set up a new project is ju I just copy this uh, folder from here, move it to the other project and just uh, edit the parts uh, that have to do with the, 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 the project name and the, the resource name. This is everything I change. So. You just have it once, and you copy it in every project, and uh, then it works. Um, and I don't know if, if, if uh, any of the extension developers who are using this uh, are using Thing to build uh, their own packages. Um, already thought about well making the integration of uh, the TransFX client yeah. and Thing. Well, it's easy, but yeah. uh, it's probably very useful just to, uh, whenever you build a package, to uh, you can do that using the Thing command, and uh, automatically it would fetch uh, exactly. Yeah. The, the yeah. This yeah. should this should be possible with no problem. Yeah. 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 I'm more interested in the webhooks where you can uh, at specific intervals you get the information. You can publish it automatically to GitHub. Yeah. So basically, you can then download everything from GitHub. So you don't have to work with the client then at all. So. Um, yeah. Maybe we can carry on with the figures a little bit. And then Oh uh, yeah, okay. Go with the figures. I'm done, yeah. I'm done. Trying not to break it this time. So a little bit about the statistics of uh, how many translators we have, etc. So we have, as I said, and that's a nice figure. Sounds. I'm breaking everything. That's what I do. Matthew. When you code, I break it. Okay. 
whatever. Uh, well, what do you want to review? Like, show it. <laughs> uh, you go over to the other So the numbers. We were pleased to see that we received uh, some um, some feedback from Transifex that sent us a, a CSV file with all the translators registered and all the strings they had translated, the number, the raw numbers. So we added the whole thing and uh, we arrived uh, to this half a million strings, which is a nice commercial thing to say, right? Half a million. Mm. But it's good. I mean, in this project started actually really like uh, working in, in September, <coughs> end, end of August, September. So half a million of strings is quite, quite okay, I think. And it is moving every, every day more with an average of a thousand string per translator. We have like um, 600 translators now in the pool of open translators. That's a nice figure also, 600 people there from 60 different languages. So that's also, also cool and it is adding up every day because we have like, in, uh, it's an estimate, right? Because you can't cut somebody in two. But we have like three translators a day that join open translators from all languages. So, I don't know, if you speak uh, very well Spanish, you join the Spanish team, or if you want Spanish Argentinian, you can, sp you can join the Spanish Argentinian team. We have, um, actually the strings, we calculated it, but it's an estimate. Again, it's tens of millions of words that were, that were translated. What else? That's it for the figures, mm. uh, I think. Yeah, we have like um, the team, the, the core team, as we call it, is uh, composed more or less about 10 people. And we communicate a lot through Skype. That is our, our communication tool. Mm. And uh, we have developers, translators, and people like me that are a little bit of everything and nothing. Mm. Uh, you can see on the website who's, who's, who's uh, part of it and I'd uh, like to say hi to all the team like Hills, Path, uh, I don't know, Tess, uh, Peter is here, uh, Daniel is joining us also. Mm. Uh, we have, as I said, few rules. This is a community thing, a Joomla thing. I think we don't have to show our credentials in Joomla. We're cool with it. Mm. And uh, we're doing this and it's working. So very happy that it, it's being di this way. We were, we were ourselves astonished by seeing all the people getting in. We thought that it would be low, 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 slow, but actually it's like kind of, and it, it works. We also estimated that we put like uh, 3,500 hours in it. That's more or less uh, the job that was done. Not on the website, because the website uh, here, Matthew and Rara Muri helped us doing the website. Mm. Uh, uh, but the, the, the real job is like helping people. They come on the forum, we have a little forum on the, on the web explaining developers, but also translators. You're developers or translators. Mm. But then you need to explain to developers how it works and translate. And that's a lot of work behind it, right? So an estimate of 3,500 hours. We, we have tweets and, and Facebook, 800 tweets. So we don't tweet like, uh, like hell. The Open Translators tweet has done like 800 tweets, which is since September. OK. So those are the figures. And I think that's it. Voila. Any questions? Anything? <coughs> All OK? So we expect you to either come and put your extension in it, Nespa, Radek, or, <laughs> or uh, come and translate. I mean, you don't, it is good if you're a professional translator that is working with Joomla, ideal case scenario. There are some, but it is good 
when you know Joomla you can translate some things and you can go and help. I'm not a professional translator. I just happen to speak many languages and so I go and help a little bit. And if I make a mistake, somebody else will come and correct it. And as I said, the memory will help correct that. Voilà. Thank you.